Greetings podcast listeners. Welcome to season six, The Moment of Truth. This is episode 67, Waking Up From Mind Control, part one. And in this episode, it's pretty vulnerable for me. I share an experience, an uncomfortable and inappropriate experience that I had while I was visiting the now infamous John of God in Brazil a few years ago. And I explained how this was a primer experience in me waking up to the sometimes very ugly truth of what is going on around us in the world and what we are waking up from now and breaking free from in this moment of truth. Enjoy the episode and stay tuned. Greetings podcast listeners. Welcome to season six, The Moment of Truth. This is episode 67, Waking Up from Mind Control, part one. And in this episode, it's pretty vulnerable for me. I share an experience, an uncomfortable and inappropriate experience that I had while I was visiting the now infamous John of God in Brazil a few years ago. And I explain how this was a primer experience in me waking up to the sometimes very ugly truth of what is going on around us in the world and what we are waking up from now and breaking free from in this moment of truth. Enjoy the episode and stay tuned. You are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical. This podcast explores the spiritual and metaphysical world through the experiences and opinions of the host and those interviewed. It should not necessarily be seen as direct endorsement or personal advice to our listeners. We encourage you to use your own discernment, judgment, and intuition regarding anything you learn from this show. Let's get metaphysical. Welcome to Let's Get Metaphysical. I'm your host, Renata Maniachi, here to remind you that you are a spiritual being having a temporary human experience here on lovely planet Earth. You are not the mind. You are not the body. You are the soul. You are an eternal light being who on some level chose to be on planet Earth right now at this beautiful moment, the moment of truth. This is season six, the moment of truth. In this season, I am creating episodes based on my own intuition and using guidance from my angelic team to discuss what is occurring from my perspective on planet Earth right now as she transitions from a primarily third dimensional reality to a primarily fifth dimensional reality. I'm being guided to take a break from having guests on the show and to share some of my own observations, experiences, and guidance about this most unprecedented and spectacular moment on this planet. We are being asked to reconcile and understand the inner and outer dynamic truth of what is occurring and has occurred on this planet, and it is not what we've been told. As always, I encourage you to think, feel, and know the truth for yourself. Take what resonates and leave the rest. I am interested in the truth, and if you are too, I urge you, especially now, do your own research. One truth leads to another. Trust and follow the resonance of truth in your own body and soul, and may it lead you to the light. Masters and angels, please help us to always feel the truth, know the truth, tell the truth, and be the truth. And let truth be a guide for me and those listening. Thank you with gratitude and full faith. Bless creation. And with that, let's jump right into the episode. Are you ready? Let's get meta. This is episode 67, Waking Up From Mind Control, part one. In this episode, I'm going to share some of my personal experiences that led me to awaken to the fact that I have been brainwashed, conditioned, and controlled by subliminal messages for most of my life. 34 years is a long time to cover. So I will only be sharing some key linchpin moments with you that really help me to realize something bigger is going on. 
though of course, there's much more that I can share in one episode. Please note, these are my personal awakening experiences. I have no ulterior motive to share these with you, other than a divine hope that you, me, and every being on the planet can see, know, and accept universal truth when we are faced with it. This is my truth, and it may not be your truth. My desire here is that in sharing my experience, it might contribute in some small way to you finding your highest truth. So be it. If you have not yet listened to the previous episode, episode 66, The Battle for Minds, I suggest you do so before listening to this one, since it gives context for what I'm talking about here. To summarize episode 66, the idea is that we've been engaged in a battle for the minds, where the ultimate prize is the soul. I shared my vast experiences with different kinds of learning, and how conventionally speaking, I'm extremely educated and grounded, and how one might think that because of this, it might be difficult for my mind to be controlled. I have come to believe that the opposite might be true for me, that because I was successful in academia, in the various opportunities life presented to me, and because my mind was so strong, sure, and righteous, I perhaps was easier to control in some ways. Let me be clear, I by no means want to give the impression that I am a victim. I am not. I've never identified in that way. I had a very positive upbringing, and am a motivated, high-functioning, successful person. I own all of my experiences and take responsibility for them. This is simply a story I want to share about how I have come into greater clarity of the outer world and found more soul realization in my inner world. For the purposes of this episode, I want to talk about how I came to recognize that I was being controlled. This is part one of two parts to this episode. And here, I will start with a primer story of how I began to realize my programming and conditioning. Because remember, it's not mind control if you know it's happening to you. To get into this part, I want to read a quote from the movie The Matrix. I know I've been referencing it a lot lately, but it's a great allegory for understanding how it was for me to recognize I was being mind controlled. This is when Morpheus is talking to Neo. Here it is. You've felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. There have been several moments in my life where I've had the thought, there's something wrong with the world. Most of them for me centered around hearing about betrayals of power, especially concerning spirituality. For example, When the stories about religious figures abusing children started to trickle out, that blew my mind. At first, it was one hushed up story, and then another and another. And then it was a flood. Scandal after scandal after scandal. Priests, rabbis, clergymen, even nuns and cardinals. It was almost numbing. I already wasn't into religion, but that turned me off even more. I did not use the term God for years, not because I didn't believe there was a supreme creator. Despite not being religious, I've always considered myself spiritual, even as a child. No, the word God felt tainted to me, used as a tool or even a weapon, so I couldn't use it for the longest time and preferred instead to use words like universe, source, all that is. These types of scandals with kids and the church and other religious organizations caused some kind of split in me that I still don't know how to define. The feeling that happens when the people who are supposed to be the most trusted, respected, and safe people, especially for a child, turn out to be the exact opposite. That stirred something in me. But it was not until it happened to me that I really started to wake up. In my mid to late 20s, I really began prioritizing my own spirituality, and in early 2018, 
after seeing a renowned spiritual healer called John of God with my mother at the Omega Institute in New York State, I decided to go to Abigiania, Brazil, to see him again over a three-week period. I had had what I took to be a major healing at Omega the first time I saw him. And though I wasn't sick, I was a seeker and wanted to see what it was like to be at his healing center, so I went. And here is where this story, this podcast, the slow realization of mind control, the feeling that something is wrong in the world, all start to converge for me. Many of you listening know that my very first podcast episodes were about John of God. Episodes one and two are still up and are about him and my trip there. And many of you also know that in late 2018, John of God was arrested and imprisoned for allegations of sexual abuse and assault in Brazil after hundreds of women came forward and named him as a predator and as someone who had sexually assaulted them while visiting his center. What you may not know is that I had my own negative, inappropriate, and uncomfortable experience with him while I was there. And because of all the quote-unquote good, light, and healing, etc., that surrounded him and that place, I talked myself out of the experience I had. My mind overpowered my heart and my soul. Here's what happened. Most people go to Abhijania with a guide. Mine was one of the first Americans to take people down there. In the center, there were a few different rooms, all with people meditating in them with their eyes shut to keep the vibration high and allow the healing entities to do their healing work. At some point, your group is called and you walk through the room slowly until you are in front of John of God, who is sitting in a chair. If you speak Portuguese, you can briefly tell him what you want healed, and in my case, my American guide spoke to him for me. The way people described how he works is that different entities would embody him, and through them, they would perform the healing. He never knew which entity of the several that he typically worked with would be with him that day. I passed by him two times with my guide on two different days. The first day, I just stood before him for a few seconds while my guide told him my needs, and then he prescribed herbs without touching me or barely looking at me, and then it was the next person's turn, and I walked out of the room. The second time I came before him on another day, my guide was excited. She said that the entity in him that day was holding people's hands as they passed by. We were a group of five, plus our guide. And so I watched as my four companions went before John of God and bent down to take his hand for a few seconds while our guide translated our needs to him and then moved on. You must understand, this is a dark room full of crystals and people meditating with their eyes closed. And most people are probably only in front of him for 10 to 30 seconds before moving on. Most people move out into the next room where they sit for a few minutes and then move outside. Sometimes John of God would ask certain people to stay in the room where he was and meditate for the rest of the session, which could be several hours. When it was my turn, because of the height he was sitting, I half bent and half knelt in front of him and offered my hand, which is what my guide had told me to do. My guide was standing right next to me, looking at him and talking to him about my needs. As this was happening, John of God took my hand and subtly but forcefully rubbed his penis over his clothes with my hand. I looked him in the eye, shocked, and he looked at me for a second and then back to my guide who was still talking to him. Then he released my hand and told my guide that I was to sit in the room he was in and meditate there for the rest of the session. The whole thing probably happened in 20 seconds. No one else in my group had been asked to do that. No one had noticed or seen what had happened. So, separated from my group, I took my seat and spent the next two hours trying to understand and rationalize what had just happened. Was that an accident? Did he have an itch? Was it not him, but the entity in him? 
Was he adjusting himself? Did that really just happen or am I crazy? Did I need it to happen for some kind of healing to occur? My mind split. I couldn't understand how someone, a healer who heals people and has been healing people for 40 years, someone I flew across the world to see, would do that. And so I did what so many people in similar situations have done. I talked myself out of it. On some level, I split from my soul. My mind was rationalizing what happened, and I let it. By the end of the session, I had convinced myself of two things. One, what happened wasn't intentional. And two, I needed that to happen to enable some kind of grand healing that I needed to have around distrust in men or the masculine at large. I talked myself so out of it that like many people in those situations, I never mentioned it to anyone. Not my guide, not to the other people in my group, not to my mom, not to my partner. I never said anything. Fast forward 10 months. By then, I'd almost completely forgotten about the incident. I had gone forward and made two excellent podcast episodes about John of God. I used them to launch this very podcast. I went on with my life, kept seeing clients, told about how I had had a great experience in Brazil. And I did. I really loved it there. And I had some major healings, despite that experience. So in order not to confuse myself, I just decided that that incident didn't occur the way that I had experienced and moved on. And then I heard the news. John of God had been accused by hundreds, maybe thousands of women, of sexual abuse and assault. One was his own daughter. And the second I heard that, the very second, I knew it was true. I knew it because of my experience. It came rushing back. And in that moment, I thought, that motherfucker, I did have that experience. He was also accused of several other unbelievable things that you can look into on your own. Things so unbelievable that you might have just dismissed the whole thing based on how crazy some of these claims sounded. He was now arrested and in a Brazilian jail awaiting trial. I immediately called my mom and then my partner and told them what had happened. I created an episode, episode 13, about the misuse of metaphysical power. I reached out to my John of God guide to see if she wanted to comment for it, which she did. I added an intro to the two episodes about John of God explaining that he was now being accused of sexual abuse and misconduct by hundreds of women. I condemned any misuse of power to control and manipulate others, especially in an arena as sacred as spirituality. I did not share my own personal story with him on that episode. It was too raw. I only shared it in the bonus content of that episode for a handful of people who supported this podcast on Patreon. I faced in a very real and visceral way how someone who is supposed to be for the light, for God, for healing, was actually not any of those things. What is confusing to so many people is that there was actual real healing that took place, for myself included. What I have come to understand about that is that the dark or negative entities can have healing capabilities too. Just because you are healed in some way doesn't mean that you are healed by the light or by God. And what is the cost? I have come to learn that there are angels of light and angels of darkness, and both are extremely powerful. The dark can be very deceptive, misleading. It gaslights, it masquerades as the light, as the truth, the benevolent, the politically correct, and on and on and on. And I'm still learning. I'm still learning about the depths of what the negative or the dark is capable of. Another cost that came out of this experience is that a negative entity attached to the back of my throat chakra that I didn't know was there until 18 months later and was found by a talented healer and trusted mentor of mine, Jerry Becker. He saw it when I asked him for help in understanding why I was speaking very harshly to people, and it didn't sound like me. 
He said it was spiny, sharp, and pokey, and that it seemed to sneak in through a spiritual layer. And when he said that, I clairvoyantly saw that it came in at John of God's center in Brazil. Together we cleared it, and I felt different instantly. Jerry is one of those pure teachers, and he knows a lot about the dark and how it works, so much so that I interviewed him about how to deal with the dark over two episodes of this podcast, episodes 29 and 30. This whole thing was a primer 3D experience for me to start to come out of the mind control and see the truth. This experience showed me in a very personal way how things that appear to be the most filled with light, God, and healing energy can actually be a facade hiding the darkest angels and demons, the forces of negativity and confusion and worse. This experience made me wonder, somewhere in the depths of my mind, what else did I think was bright and shiny and good that in truth was not any of those things but the opposite? Who else had I trusted and liked and put faith in that was not actually deserving of it? It had me really start to question who and what I believed in and why. Who did I like and trust and why? Who did I dislike and distrust? And why? You might be thinking this incident was enough to deter me from working with healers again. Quite the contrary. I learned a lot from this experience. It has actually led me to have greater discernment and appreciation for true and pure healers. When you go to impure teachers or healers, there will be a cost. Even if the teacher themselves does not consciously know that they are not pure, you will still be responsible for your choice and the karma that comes with it. I now have a high level of discernment and sensitivity in this area. I know and value those who understand it all, but who choose to work for the light. This experience made me more able to see and recognize pure spiritual healers and teachers, and not so pure ones. For example, I realized I should never feel uncomfortable because of something a teacher said or did. I should never feel like I have to reconcile or rationalize anyone's words or actions in order to make them feel better to me. If that was happening, that was a big red flag. Believe it or not, I'm extremely grateful that I had this experience, and I'm grateful that it wasn't worse. It massively helped me in my awakening process. And it's taken me this long to process it myself and to be ready to share it on a wider scale. This incident was not the be all end all of awakening for me. I was not suddenly woke to all the lies and deceptions that surrounded me and exist in the world still. It was a primer. It was like the corkscrew being wound into the cork, but without the bottle being fully opened. And now I'd love to tune in to a fifth dimensional perspective of this episode and to any other guidance coming in from my angelic team. And I'll ask them to assist me with this now. Everything that we experience can lead us further into our growth, into our ascension, into our enlightenment. We get to take responsibility for our experiences and learn from them. You can learn quickly, or you can learn slowly. It doesn't matter. You'll learn either way eventually. I needed this experience. On some level, I actually probably signed up to have this experience so that it would wake me up by a certain time. This was extremely important for me to see because it enabled me to continue to awaken ever since that moment, and before. What's happening right now on the planet is a massive, massive unveiling. They're saying different words, unveiling, revealing, ascension, truth-telling, and they're showing me pictures of just hundreds of thousands of beings with masks being pulled off. The masks that we see are just what we see, but it's not the truth. And all these masks are being pulled off right now. 
That's what they're showing me. We're in it. They're saying this is it. This really is the moment of truth. They helped me choose that title for this season, and this is it. We're in it. And we're all being asked to fine-tune our discernment, our truth meters, our truth weather vanes, however you want to put it. We're being asked to dust them off and to really tune into them and use them correctly. And they thank me for my vulnerability. Thank you. Anything else? No. Bless creation. This was Waking Up From Mind Control Part 1. In Part 2, I'm going to go into the cascade of keystone experiences I had earlier this year, in 2020, when the cork was fully removed from the bottle, so to speak. And I'll share about the flood of realizations I had throughout that experience. Please understand, there were several things that helped me both before and after the John of God incident to be ready to experience that and to see the truth of it. And these things have continued to help me to recognize more and more truth as time goes on. And I have an episode about discerning truth coming out soon, but for now, a lot of my being able to recognize more and more truth has to do with using a spiritual development process called subconscious repair. This is a highly advanced spiritual technology created by the purest spiritual teacher I've come across. Master Healer, John Douglas. Yes, another John, but completely different. I will go more into how and why I feel that John Douglas is a pure teacher in a later episode. But for now, if you want to learn more about him, I did an entire podcast season based on the miraculous healings that he and the master angels he works with performed for over 50 people whom I have interviewed. That is season four, the season of miracles, and it begins with episode 37. Check it out. If you're already interested in having this process, you can purchase it at masterangels.org. I suggest buying the bliss bundle. This is subconscious repair, which you listen to once per week, and another process called soul repair, which you listen to every day. This combination is incredibly powerful and it does the work for you. You just have to listen. In three months time or less, you will notice changes. I don't get any kickback from this at all, unless it's spiritual, I guess. This is simply the best way I know about to get better at discerning truth. If you're interested in this topic and want to dive deeper, you might enjoy my live course exit the matrix that I co-lead with my up, up and awaken co-creator, Julia Malone. This is our live three week remote course that takes a deep dive into subconscious clearing, becoming aware of and deprogramming negative conditioning, old programs and removing any subliminal messaging that we have picked up over a lifetime of being on this planet. We let go of as much as we are able to and reprogram to bring the divine and universal truths closer to us. This work is deep and it will change you. If you're hearing this when it airs, we are running this course at the beginning of January in 2021. And if you're hearing this later, we're probably still running the course. So check out realizeyourawakening.com for more info. I'm going to leave it there for today. Thank you for listening. Stay safe, stay awake, and stay meta. The Let's Get Metaphysical podcast is an up, up, and awaken production. Our intention is to raise the vibration of the planet by sharing, validating, and normalizing spiritual and metaphysical experiences. The show is produced and hosted by Renata Maniachi co-creator of Up, Up, and Awaken Productions, a platform devoted to creating conscious content to assist in the awakening currently taking place on this planet. If you want to see more from Up, Up, and Awaken, please subscribe to the Up, Up, and Awaken Productions channel on YouTube. If you are looking for more support in your awakening process, please consider becoming a member of our Up, Up, and Awaken community on Patreon. Patrons in this community both give support to the conscious content that we create, like this podcast, and receive support in their awakening 
via the community's offerings, including courses, live group healings, and an interactive community. You can join the Up, Up, and Awaken community by visiting patreon.com slash up, up, and awaken. Subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss an episode. Give us a five-star rating or write us a review on your podcast app. To learn more, visit our website at letsgetmeta.com. The Let's Get Meta podcast is almost entirely listener-supported. If you love the show and want to support it, you can still become a patron of the podcast at patreon.com slash up, up, and awaken. We appreciate all types of support. It helps keep this show going. Thank you for listening. Stay meta. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Metaphysical.